Hello, I am Professor N. K. Pandey from University of Lucknow. And uh, today we are going to discuss on photoelectric effect. As we understand, the photoelectric effect is the process of emitting the electrons from the metal surface when the metal surface is exposed to an electromagnetic radiation of sufficiently high frequency. If we take an example, then an ultraviolet light will be required in the case of ejection of electrons from an alkali metal. This is a small setup of the, uh, of the photoelectric effect. And to understand the photoelectric effect uh, experiment elaborately, now let us consider this uh, schematic diagram. In this diagram, we have an evacuated quartz tube in which we have an anode and a cathode. And uh, through outer circuit, a potential divider is, is uh, applied so that a potential difference can, can be maintained between the anode and the cathode. <clears throat> we can see that an electromagnetic wave is being irradiated on the anode and the ejected um, electrons are rushing toward the cathode and after reaching the cathode, they constitute a current. Now, let us consider the laws of photoelectric emission. <clears throat> the first law we can say is that there is no time lag between the irradiation of the surface and the ejection of an electron. This cannot be explained on the basis of electromagnetic wave theory. For example, if we try to understand it on the basis of electromagnetic theory, what will happen? Let us consider that. For the ejection of an electron from a metal surface, generally we require an energy of around 10 to the power of minus 6 watt per square meter. Now, if this energy is to be irradiated on a metallic surface of 1 meter square area, then 1 meter square area will be having atoms to the tune of 10 to the power of 19. So if we consider that this energy is being absorbed by 10 layers of atoms, then there will be 10 to the power of 20 atoms altogether. And this 10 to the power of minus 6 watt of energy will be distributed among 10 to the power of uh, uh, 20 atoms. Then each atom is going to get energies of approximately 10 to the power of minus 26 watt that is joule per second. So if we convert this energy to electron volt, then it will come out to be approximately 10 to the power of minus seven electron volt per second that every atom will be getting. So for those atoms to get energy to the tune of one, two or three electron volt that is needed for the ejection of electrons from metal surface, it will take approximately one year, that means, to say in a nutshell, if we irradiate the surface today, then we will have to wait for the ejection of electrons to come out after one year. Naturally, that is not the case. And we know that there is no time lag between the irradiation of the surface and the ejection of the electrons. Now, the second law of photoelectric emission, that at a particular frequency, that is if we fix the frequency of incident radiation, the rate of emission of photoelectrons, that is the photocurrent, increases with increase in the intensity of the incident radiation. The next law, photoelectric effect does not occur at frequency less than the threshold frequency. Every metal has a work function that is a threshold frequency. If you want the photoelectrons to come out, then the frequency of the, irradi of the radiation should be greater than this frequency. Now, next one. At the frequency above the threshold frequency, the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons depends on the frequency of the exposed radiation and not on its intensity. So we have to remember two points before we proceed further. Number one, that the photo current depends on the intensity of the radiation and kinetic energy of electrons, that depends on the frequency of the radiation. This we will understand slightly later. Now, Explanation of the photoelectric effect. Number one, we understand that it cannot be explained on the basis of electromagnetic wave theory. In 1905, 
Einstein proposed that the photoelectric effect could be understood through the idea proposed by the German theoretical physicist Max Planck. Planck was seeking to explain the characteristics of a radiation emitted by the hot bodies. Now, Planck had assumed that while the radiation is emitted continuously at little bursts of energy or little bundles of energy called quanta, but propagated continuously as is in space as electromagnetic waves. Einstein agreed on the first part, that is, the radiation were emitted continuously as little bursts of energy called quanta but he did not agree on the second part that it propagated continuously as, as in space as waves einstein proposed that light not only was emitted as a, as quanta at a time but also propagated as individual quantum sufficiently small to be absorbed by the electrons planck found that the quantity associated with the particular frequency nu of light all had the same energy and this energy was proportional to nu that is e is equal to h nu here h is planck's constant now photoelectric effect can be explained on the basis of einstein's relation that is h nu is equal to h nu naught plus t maximum here h nu is the energy of the electromagnetic radiation falling on the metal surface nu naught is the threshold frequency h nu naught is the work function and t maximum is the kinetic energy taken away by the electrons so out of the h nu falling on the metal surface h nu naught is taken up in ejection of the electron and the difference of the two h nu minus h nu naught is taken away as kinetic energy of the electrons now let us come back to the laws of photoelectric effect photoelectric emission and let us first of all understand how to define intensity in wave, wave mechanics and how to define intensity in quantum mechanics in wave mechanics we define intensity as the total energy falling normal to a surface per unit area of the surface per second but if understanding intensity in quantum mechanics it should be done in terms of the number of photons that is intensity should be defined that as number of photons falling per unit area of the surface per second that means increasing the intensity will mean increasing the number of photons falling per second and if the number of photons falling per falling per second on the metal surface is increased then the number of electrons being ejected per second will increase and therefore the photo current should increase that means increasing the intensity will mean increasing the photo current but if we increase the frequency of individual photons we are increasing the strength of the individual photons that is the energy of the individual photons that means if we are increasing the h nu h nu not remains fixed so naturally h nu minus h nu not that is equal to t maximum will increase that is if we increase the energy or the frequency of the radiation being irradiated on the metallic surface then t maximum should increase so we have been able to explain both that why if we increase the intensity the photo current should increase and if we increase the frequency t maximum or the kinetic energy of the electron should increase now here is a graph between the photo current and the potential difference here we can see that initially even if the potential difference is zero there is some photo current present now this is because that the the when the electrons are ejected out of the metal surface some of the electrons may have t maximum sufficiently large that is h nu minus h nu not is equal to t maximum sufficiently large that they are able to reach the cathode all by themselves and constitute the current so initially even if the potential difference is zero we have some photo current but for rest of the electrons which do not have sufficient energy to reach the cathode we need to give them extra energy and so if we increase the potential difference on the x axis the number of electrons reaching the cathode will increase and the photo current will increase but if we have the intensity fixed that is as shown in the figure if we take intensity r then for a fixed intensity we have the number of 
photons falling per second fixed so the number of electrons coming out is fixed so photo current will be fixed that is if we keep the intensity fixed after some time when all the electrons ejected because for this frequent this uh, intensity reaches the cathode and no more electrons are left there will be no in further increase in the photo current even if we keep on increasing the potential difference that means there will be saturation effect the saturation photo current will increase only if we increase the intensity if we increase the intensity again number of photons per second will increase number of electrons coming out per second will increase and photo current will increase therefore for a given frequency if we increase the intensity like this i 2i 3i the saturation photo current is also going to increase now let us come back to this point here if we increase the potential difference in the reverse direction then because for a given frequency t maximum is fixed therefore if we go on increasing the potential difference in the reverse direction the more less and less energetic electrons will stop from coming to the cathode so at the end of it starting from the less and less energetic electron to the maximum energetic electron will stop at a particular frequency at a particular potential difference applied then the photo current will become zero that is this is called the the stopping potential now mind it this stopping potential has nothing to do with the intensity it has to do with the frequency because if the frequency is large then the t maximum will be more and t maximum is more that means we need larger potential difference to stop that electron so if we want to understand it better then let us go for the second graph here we see that the intensity has been kept fixed and the frequency of the radiation has been increased from new one to new two to new three then naturally the electron the maximum energetic electron coming with frequency new three will be having more energy than that with the new two and that with the new one therefore we will need more and more potential difference to stop those maximum energetic electrons in in coming to the cathode so therefore if the frequency is increased the stopping potential is going to increase so we have been able to understand that why if we increase the frequency the stopping potential is going to increase now let us again consider the einstein's relation h nu is equal to h nu not plus t maximum this t maximum is nothing but e into v and uh, this stopping potential and this if we can manipulate slightly to write in this way v is equal to h by e nu minus h by e nu not and if we come we plot a graph between the stopping potential v and the frequency nu that you can see comparing with the standard linear equation this h by e is the slope of the curve that is slope of the curve will give the measurement of the planck's constant and the intercept on the x axis that is the frequency axis will give the measurement of the threshold frequency as we can see from the graph so we have been able to to explain on the basis of quantum theory the photoelectric effect thanks for your kind attention